today we shall be covering the uh, starting with the end compartments of the leg and shall be inshallah ta'ala completing uh, the anterior compartment of the leg along with the details of its contents the compartments of the leg are formed with the help of intermuscular septa that arise from the under surface of the deep fascia of the leg that is called the crural fascia and basically two septa arise from the deep surface of the deep fascia of the leg that is the anterior intermuscular septum and the posterior intermuscular septum and this posterior uh, intermuscular septum gives off a further extension that enters the in between the muscles of the posterior compartment of leg dividing these muscles into two groups with the help of anterior intermuscular septum and posterior intermuscular septum the compartment that is formed between the tibia and anterior intermuscular septum and behind we have the interosseous membrane so the compartment that lies in front of the interosseous membrane between the tibia and anterior intermuscular septum is labeled as anterior compartment then we have a lateral compartment that lies between the anterior and posterior intermuscular septa and fibula behind and behind the interosseous membrane between the tibia and fibula lies the larger bulkier in size the posterior compartment which is further divided into two groups of muscles with the help of an extension of the fascia that is given off by the posterior intermuscular septum the anterior compartment of the leg includes such contents as muscles nerves and vessels the muscles uh, present within the anterior compartment of the leg starting from medial to lateral side include the tibialis anterior extensor hallucis longus extensor digitorum longus and on the further side of it as part of extensor digitorum longus there is another muscle a very small muscle called peroneus tertius so from medial to lateral we have in the green tibialis anterior in the purple is shown extensor hallucis longus which lies lateral to tibialis anterior tendon and the lateral most muscle in the anterior compartment of the leg includes the extensor digitorum longus and its part peroneus tertius or fibularis tertius <coughs> nerves present within the same compartment include the deep fibular nerve branch of common peroneal nerve and the vessels that run in the same compartment include the anterior tibial vessels that is anterior tibial artery and its accompanying venae comitans the deep fibular nerve not only uh, is the content of the anterior compartment of leg but is also providing the nerve supply to the anterior compartment of leg especially the motor supply and the blood supply is received by the anterior tibial vessels this is peroneus tertius that can be seen over the lower part of the lower lateral part of the leg so now we can uh, see the details of the muscles of anterior compartment of leg one by one let's talk about the tibialis anterior tibialis anterior is the medial most and superficial most muscle within the anterior compartment of the leg as the name is indicating it is arising from the lateral surface of the tibia going to run towards the medial aspect of the foot to get attached on the medial surface of the cuneiform bone that is one of the tarsal bones of the foot and base of the first metatarsal its tendon begins around in the middle of the leg and acquires its synovial sheath before passing deep to the extensor retinacula of the ankle joint 
This muscle receives its nerve supply from the deep peroneal nerve and recurrent janicular and assists in the, uh, and is the strongest dorsiflexor of the ankle joint, assists in the inversion of the foot and also helps to maintain the medial longitudinal arch of the foot. MLA is abbreviation for medial longitudinal arch of the foot. Lateral to tibialis anterior is a deep muscle called extensor hallucis longus. Extensor, the location of the extensor hallucis longus is such that its upper part is hidden deep to the tibialis anterior and extensor digitorum longus attachments on the tibia, introscious membrane and fibula respectively. But in the lower part of the leg, it becomes or it emerges from the deep to uh, superficial surface and comes to lie on the lateral side of the tibialis anterior, running further medially towards the big toe. So it arises from the middle half and the adjacent introscious membrane of the fibula, its upper attachment hidden under the extensor digitorum longus laterally and tibialis anterior medially and it inserts into the base of the terminal palings of the big toe. Receives its nerve supply from the deep peroneal nerve and its action is primarily as the dorsiflexor or extensor of the big toe and assists in the dorsiflexion of the ankle joint with other extensors of the ankle joint. Next muscle is the extensor digitorum longus. <clears throat> extensor digitorum longus is considered to be the lateral most muscle among the muscles of anterior compartment of leg. It arises from the fibula, mainly the upper part of the medial surface of the fibula, along with some fibers taking their origin from the small part of the lateral tibial condyle of the tibia. And when it runs downwards, passes deep to the extensors of the extensor retinacular of the ankle joint. Soon after that, as it reaches the dorsum of the foot, its tendons divide into four further tendons to be inserted into the respective lateral four toes. When each of these tendons, they reach the base of the uh, proximal phalanx of the toe, they split to form the extensor expansion, which is a hood-like fibrous sheet that is formed and derived from each four tendons of the extensor digitorum longus. This uh, extensor expansion, also called dorsal extensor expansion, is similar to its structure, in its structure, to its um, counterpart in the um, uh, upper limb hand, dorsum of the hand, it, at the base of the proximal phalanx, this extensor expansion divides into two lateral slips and a central slip. The central slip gets attached onto the middle phalanx, whereas the two lateral slips attach over the lateral sides of the base of the distal phalanx. And it is here that these three slips again unite to form the single tendon. This muscle derives its uh, nerve supply from the deep peroneal nerve and uh, its action is primarily on the uh, lateral photos to extend them as well as it assists other dorsiflexors to extend the ankle joint. Last muscle uh, is the fibularis or peroneus tertius. It is often considered to be and regarded as part of the extensor digitorum longus muscle. And it shares the synovial sheet, a common synovial sheet with the four tendons of the extensor digitorum longus muscle. Uh, it is often absent and it arises along with the extensor digitorum longus as well as lower part of fibula and gets inserted into the, primarily into the base of the fifth metatarsal bone and with the help of a small extension of the tendon also gets inserted over the 
superior surface of the fifth metatarsal bone. It receives its nerve supply again from the deep peroneal nerve and uh, it assists in the dorsiflexion of the ankle joint and also primarily act as a verter of the foot. Next, we have um, the nerve supply of the anterior compartment of the leg, which is primarily derived from the deep peroneal or fibular nerve. So the course of the uh, deep, uh, in, this, uh, in this lecture, we shall consider the course and branches of the deep peroneal nerve in the leg only. Its um, part in the foot will be covered uh, in the lecture of the foot. So deep peroneal or fibular nerve arises as one of the terminal branches of the common peroneal nerve opposite the neck of fibula. And it begins its course within the peroneus longus muscle on the lateral side of the leg. Then the nerve spirals around the neck of the fibula, enters the anterior compartment of the leg by piercing the anterior intermuscular septum. And after that, it descends within the anterior compartment of the leg, deep to extensor distorum longus, first lying lateral, then anterior, and then continues laterally within the anterior compartment alongside the tibial artery. Alongside the tibial artery. The nerve passes behind the extensor etinacula. The branches given off by the fibular nerve within the leg include articular branches to the ankle joint and motor branches to the muscles of the uh, anterior compartment of the leg. Hence, the area of supply in the leg is primarily motor in nature, supplying the muscles of the leg. Now we uh, come to the last topic uh, from the anterior compartment of the leg, that is the anterior tibial artery or vessels. Anterior tibial artery begins as one of the smaller terminal branches of the popliteal artery. It arises at the lower border of the popliteal muscle at the back of the knee. And after arising, it enters the anterior, uh, anterior compartment of the leg by passing through the upper aperture within the introsious membrane. It descends on the anterior surface of the introsious membrane accompanied by the uh, deep peroneal nerve, where in the upper part of its course, the nerve lies lateral to it and in the middle almost it crosses anteriorly, but then continues in the lower part of its course laterally. Artery for its upper part in the course lies deep um, to the muscles of the anterior compartment, particularly the extensor digitorum longus laterally and tibialis anterior medially. But in the lower part, it finally emerges to lie superficial in front of the lower end of the tibia. After passing through the, or deep to the extensor retinacula of the ankle joint, at this level, the relation of the artery at the, just above the ankle joint, include the tendon of the tibialis anterior medially. And the tendon of extensor hallucis longus also medially. And the lateral structure is the deep peroneal nerve. And it is this site that in human beings, uh, we can palpate the pulsation of the anterior tibial artery. And after crossing the ankle joint, the region of ankle joint, it changes its name to dorsalis pedis artery. 
Branches uh, by the anterior tibial artery for the anterior compartment of the leg include muscular branches to the muscles of the compartment, same compartment, and anastomotic branches that participate in the anastomosis around the two joints, knee and ankle joints. Anterior tibial artery is accompanied by two vena committants that follow its course and enter the posterior compartment of the leg to reach the popliteal fossa in order to form the popliteal vein by joining the posterior tibial vena committants. So this was all about the normal gross anatomy of the anterior compartment of leg.